Okay guys, let's do this one really quickly. You have cells and they have DNA and they have mitochondria. They have a nucleus that came from bacteria with DNA and they have mitochondria, which are batteries. You come from a single stem cell, a single cell that gives one set of DNA from mom and one set of DNA from dad. You unfold or unpackage yourself into everything in your body by that single DNA stem cell. You have a decision every single day. Am I going to grow or am I going to shrink and eat myself? Am I going to grow or am I going to shrink and eat myself? When you're a baby, a fetus, a zygote, you are in a state of replication of that DNA and copying of it to make all the parts of your body fast and furious. Fast forward to aging. When the DNA in a single cell, one cell, gets broken, you have repair mechanisms, they're called DNA repair mechanisms, that go in and fix that DNA damage. Your ability to fix the DNA damage is governed by if you're in a growing state or a starving state. A growing state or a starving state, you have DNA repair mechanisms that are influenced by your environment. That's your epigenetics above genetics or environmental impact. So cancer starts with one single cell that has DNA mutations in the latter, either single mutations, one A, T, C, or G that's mutated and it happens over and over and you can't keep up with eating and recycling it, or a huge mutation, like a double-stranded mutation, both sides of the DNA break, and you can't fix it because your tumor suppressor genes, turn off cancer genes, were handed down to you in a broken fashion from mom and dad. So that's an example of like BRCA mutations that are more popular, uh, more common in the Ashkenazi Jewish population, but all of us can get them. So I'm gonna say it again. You start as one single cell, a zygote, with one set of DNA from mom, 23, and one set of DNA from dad. Your body, I call this M theory of the body, unfolds from three layers to everything you see, everything. When you get cancer after you've aged, and this is most cancers, you get DNA mutations in a single cell and the ability to repair it over is overwhelmed because you eat too much. You're constantly in a storage state. The ability to fix it or kill it is called apoptosis, cell cannibalism, or programmed cell death or suicide. It goes by many hats. It basically means you have to eat yourself. So if you're facing cancer, you lost regulation of one tiny cell a long time ago. Now some cancers grow faster because they divide faster and some grow slower. Pancreatic cancer and ovarian cancer grow fast. You use your pancreas a lot. You use your ovary a lot. Breast cancer, uterine cancer, those are slow growing cancer. But the root cause is still mutations in your DNA and you didn't eat yourself to a state of starvation to recycle that tissue and kill that cell. The word in science is apoptosis. It means programmed cell death or cell suicide. Those DNA mutations can come from three things. Ionizing radiation like ultraviolet light, cosmic rays, gamma rays, x-rays, radiation that you get when you get your thyroid or some part of your body radiated. Ionizing radiation. Viruses, like human papillomavirus in our cervix, injects DNA sequences into our cervix. And when we don't fix it, we get cervical cancer or, colon or um, anal cancer or throat cancer. And too many free radicals, reactive oxygen species, wild crazy men with empty bunk beds that are stealing electrons from us. Those are the three things that cause the DNA damage. So if you are facing cancer, you have to learn to teach your body to enter ketosis so you can actually burn your own fat for fuel and then eat yourself 
Nobody's coming to save you. No chemotherapy is going to save you. Your body has an internal mechanism to eat cancer cells. It's called, it's a fancy word. I know it's called apoptosis, but it just means self cannibalism, eating yourself. Literally in the scientific literature, they call it eating yourself. No one is going to save you. That's why when I say you have to eat all the fat before you eat the rat, the rat is the cancer under the table. And if you have a smorgasbord of food and you don't eat it off, you're not going to eat the cancer. Thank you. You're not going to be able to eat the cancer. Okay. I hope that makes sense. This is what I teach the why and the how to in my ketosis group. That's where you start. I probably won't start another one until February because I'm just finishing one. If you guys have the horsepower, come into the one that we have about five days left on and learn it. I have a webinar on ketosis. That's step one. Step two is learning how to fast, teaching your body what the discomfort of fasting feels like and learning to recognize it as a good feeling. Step three is knowing how long to fast and how much to fast. And it's different for all of you. It's not one meal a day. It's not intermittent fasting. It's not fasting for a set number of hours. It's fasting until you eat yourself. You eat your cancer. You eat your damaged cells. It's fasting for you based on your hormones, your leptin, your thyroid, your vitamin D, your number of fat cells, your amount of muscle. After that, once you understand those concepts and your brain is online again, then I teach light. So we just started a light group. After that, we do advanced autophagy and apoptosis, which is how to make more mitochondria, how to make more ATP, how to make more muscle, how to get the ratios right, how to fluctuate it up and down so you don't get too lean and stop ovulating and lower your testosterone and stop being at wanting to have sex. And after that, we teach quantum mechanics. And after that, we teach Jedi. That's how it goes.